I've got a real quick video here today just to cover over uh, to go over a couple of pointers. Now, if you've been playing for a while, this is, this is relatively obvious, but uh, for the, you know, if you're still relatively new, this will be pretty helpful. And if nothing else, having it said out loud helps you uh, helps it come to mind in times when you actually need it. Uh, but actually, this first one is actually a little bit tricky. Now, this would actually be a good opportunity to think about what you would do in this situation, right? So I have a so let's just say uh, forgetting the rest of the side of my cards. Uh, I'm playing this hybrid consume monster from Gwendolyn, by the way. Uh, so you have three cards that you obviously want to keep in your deck. You want to get rid of these. It's pretty unlucky to have all three of them in your hand. And you also have two Neckers, both of which are fine to go back into your deck. Uh, but having one is okay. So now you're thinking it's possible when I mo start mulliganing these harpies that I draw into the third Necker. And the third Necker, not very good, right? So you have to decide, do you want to keep a Harpy in your hand or do you want to keep a, a Necker in your hand? Because if you uh, hit the Necker, you won't get any more Neckers, but you'll have one Harpy left over since you can only mulligan two of these. Conversely, you mulligan all three of the Harpies, accidentally get a Necker, possibly. Uh, so the high EV play here and the high expected value play here is to just hit all the Harpies and then keep the third Necker. Because at, at its worst, a Necker isn't all that bad. At its worst, a Harpy is just a three strength that doesn't do anything. It needs to be in your deck because it can be pulled out so effortlessly. Also, one point, um, I'm playing against Radovid right now, and Radovid can lock these Neckers down. So having three in your hand is actually not as bad as when up against different other classes. <clears throat> so in other words, always mulligan the Heartbeats because they're completely useless and the, unless they're in your deck, whereas the Neckers still have some value if you play them. And luckily, I didn't draw into another Necker. So I won the coin flip. Radovid has to go first. That's really bad for him because he wants to play reactively. I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Not a whole lot happens here. This was uh, <laughs> this was actually just my first game of the day. Uh, and I got pretty lucky. So I'm contemplating whether or not I want to play uh, Woodland Spirit or my hero ability. Usually I prefer to use the, uh, the hero ability first because it takes away, it limits the information in which you give to your opponent because now they know you have Woodland Spirit out, obviously, and you have a, a Dagon, right, that you can still use. So they can play in their moves more accordingly. If you Dagon first, they don't know you have Woodland Spirit in your hand. That's kind of like hiding information a little bit. But uh, I also have, oh, wait, I don't have Renew in this deck. <laughs> It actually might have been a mistake, but it's fine. It, it pulls out the, the Foglin and it pulls out the Harpy at the very least. And that gives me a nice little tempo boost in a deck that has pretty low tempo. But still, generally speaking, I think going Dagon first is probably better unless you're running Renew. And then using Woodland Spirit is completely fine. Uh, encouraged, even. And I'm going to pull out Arachnus Behemoth here because I have a Vran Warrior and I want to get those, uh, those Spiderlings, Arachne. He's pretty much given up on this um this trebuchet. He's stacking on the mid row. I'm pretty sure I'd just go with Vran Warrior here. Yeah. Now there's some level of like I I may have been able to hit it here on the Woodland Spirit, and then it'll consume the Foglet. And then I can uh, fog again to get the fog back out of the graveyard. But I just want to play a little bit safe because I don't want to eat my behemoth just in case this round goes really long. Oh, yeah. And then he gets really unlucky. <laughs> he lines up three of these seven units. This is a pointer like three and a half or whatever. Excuse me. Uh, evening is still a thing. <laughs> so you need to be very careful. And um, actually, did, did his drummer kid actually buff one of those? No, he just got really unlucky. There is really not much of a reason to place the set, another 7 strength unit here. He just could have placed it on the melee row and it still would have been fine. Yeah, Igni is still thing, so be careful about that. And obviously I'm going to punish him. And then he pretty much instant concedes. Winning on the same cards is really good. Now, so going to the second round, like I've said a million times before, uh, I'm playing a deck that can have some carryover. Uh, yeah, just in general, I have some really good carryover, both with this uh, ne uh, Necker and 
man. I always forget these names, but the six strength melee unit there. So what I can do is I can just bleed them out here. This is another good example of bleeding out. Now, obviously, it's a little bit less. And it's very unlucky to hit Necker right there. I've almost like resigned to just losing this game, by the way, by this point, because my hand is pretty weak. Uh, I played my spy, so I can't really go for too long of a round here. Or I can't commit too much to this round, rather. But basically, I just want him to I want him to play cards. I want him to use uh, parts of his combo. I want him to use cards he would otherwise not want to play. Also, he has a pretty good advantage going into round three because that allows his armor to stack up quite a bit. And also things like trebuchet. So I'm going to use my very unvaluable cards like this, uh, this rock golem. Which can uh, which will spawn two two units later. <laughs> two two units. I keep thinking in terms of Hearthstone. Play the Necker. He's going to use his leader ability to cancel both of those, which is fine. I pretty much expected that. I wanted him to use his leader ability, so he can't use it later. There it is. And he should play on the Cedro. That's right. Yep. Completely expected. I'm going to play my other Necker. Again, like there's not really much worth in me playing this, but my low value Necker. Actually, why is he? Why is Necker even in this uh, this deck? It's not that great, is it? Uh, now, obviously, so this is very important, right? Uh, before this decoy that he kind of lucked out on a little bit. Nine strength to forty-four strength. That is huge. That's ginormous. But we still have five, six cards left that I can play. Obviously, he cannot. He actually should not have played Dijkstra there because Dijkstra is a really high tempo play, and you just save that for last. Also, after you've already thinned out your deck a little bit, so you know what you're going to get. I'm actually, that was kind of a mistake. Unless he was trying to dig for decoy, but I doubt it. Uh, he, sh he should have just been playing low tempo plays like uh, the Redanian Elite and all that. But also, I've been playing a lot of low tempo plays as well because the point disparity doesn't matter. How much he wins this round by doesn't matter. He could win this round by 150 points and it wouldn't matter. So long as he doesn't pass early, or so long as I don't keep playing and then he passes early and I can't catch up to that point total. Uh, so, I, in other words, if I don't just waste a card. Uh, but that could be a pretty useful bluff. So I'm playing my useless cards, right? Necker is not going to get very much value. Uh, these Neckers are not going to get much value. This Brock almost uh, has carryover, also not that much value. Granted, I do like a, a bit of a long round because of Dagon. But at the same time, his cards are valued at so much higher than mine are, as seen by this point value. Um, and if things had gone right, he would have gone down to five cards. I would have gone and we would have gone into round three, him being one card down. Uh, and him going first, which is amazing. Yeah, and I'm trying to spam this to make sure to get him to play it. Because he seemed like a relatively... I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, so he, he kind of liked that on playing Spy. But still, I'm going to play my Necker anyway to just waste his time. Because I'm not going to get much value out of those anyway. And he used So I played my 5-point Necker. He used a 12-point uh, play with some upside. It's very good. Obviously, get rid of the Harpy. Still haven't gone to the deck, which is not very good. That's kind of why this deck likes a, a really good uh, long round one. Also, to power up your Neckers. So he plays the Trebuchet first. And seeing that, I'm going to play my Dagon Weather. I'm looking to see what he had in the graveyard for Caretaker. And for my uh, five strength uh, Vampire dude. Put the fog down, get the foglet back out. Looking at life coach here. It's a pretty good card. All right, so this is this is the final point, more or less. Uh, so I noticed, right, he has, uh, <clears throat> and I pretty much go hit on it immediately. He has this 10, this 10 armor on this dude, right? I checked his graveyard and I saw that he had the uh, heavy cavalry, right? Now, by... I'm being cognizant of when I can use Caretaker and get the most value out of it. I Obviously, I know he's playing an armor deck, right? So if I can steal this armor away before he uses it, then I am basically... It's almost like stealing 20 points, right? Because I'm not only getting that 10 points of armor uh, or 10 points converted into strength, but I'm also taking away 10 points of strength from him. So I'm going to use Caretaker here, and I'm going to steal his cavalry from his graveyard, which I checked and made sure he had. And then I'm going to use it on his armor and take it away from him. 
Now, there's something to be said about being a little bit more patient and waiting for him to commit something like um, uh, Troll, but I think this is good enough. If nothing else, I've denied his armor. So that was the point. Just be aware of when you can make the most out of your plays. And who you're going up against. If I was going up against like a non-armor deck and he had a whole bunch of armors on his card, I could have waited much longer to play that. But I know since he has cavalries, uh, I want to play it sooner than he does. He has a useless one now. He would have been able to hit uh, hit twice, but I took away even that. Also, I forced him to use um, his Thunderbolt Potion in the previous previous round, and now he can't steal armor from that either. Also, I was making sure not to roast stack too hard. Although, actually, I wasn't making sure to roast stack. It just happened that way, but in general. And there you go. Just, uh, just a few quick points to be aware of. You probably already know these if you've been playing for a while, but that's it. Thanks for watching.